everyone we're here in my patio and this is where I kept my um, orchids when it gets too cold one of them anyway the other one is the shed and this one last week when it got cold to 39 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius I left it outside but there was I see a sign in the leaves that it starts there's a change in the leaves so but after a few days of watering and light and adjustment it starts to pair up again but it just shows me that um, this dendrobium bacteriosum is a little bit sensitive to cold when it's 39 so I decided this week to bring them in and that's my Ancilia Africana they will be coming out so I can water them because it's starting to get warm now these are my uh, Vesevola the one with Masmehor still in bloom and um, down here um, starting to bloom is my uh, Twinkle Let's see the name so that's the uh, Chica Margaret and Sidium Chica Margaret so yeah they are flowering for me um, yeah this uh, this time there are really a lot of buds um, coming out so yeah this is where I put them here the others are on the floor there are plants that I'm supposed to um, repot and never got to it and this one flowered for me it's supposed to be spring but it started to flower and there's one there just put it under the fan and this one the sweet 16 on cedium this one is uh, Puan, Puana Huera Lava Burst. Yeah. And this one, first time to um, bloom for me. This is uh, Encyclia Taiwan Smile. And this one is the Iguanagara, the yellow one. I haven't, I think I've seen it flower one time. And uh, yeah. It's the uh, golden elf, Iwanagara apple blossom golden elf, so it's yellow. So it's flying for the first time. This one is Dialelia snowflake. So I, I, I put them here. They're my priorities and my seedlings first on that first day when it drops to 40s. And then when it starts to get 30s, the next day I bring in the rest of the plant or orchids. So that's Gold Coast, very pretty, there's two of them there, yeah, and behind is the, uh, my uh, Agrecum Eburnum, and uh, it survived uh, because I repot it, and um, yeah, and that's my, um, this pink one is from uh, Palmer's Orchid. I'll put in the screen the name I forgot right now and then the, that's from Lowe's another Ancivium and this one is uh, I got it from Lowe's it was already having spikes so I grab it it's one of those Cordigera kind of type um, this one I love it flowered again for me and uh, something on the name like uh, have a snake to it uh, let's see uh, Aturaria uh, let's see sorry sea snake yeah very pretty I love that color yeah and ho over here I got it as a seedling and it it grew up there's two of them this is my uh, Mandevilla Magnifica 
and here is my um, Brother Bola little stars so they their blooms last long time over here is my uh, swan orchid it bloomed again and it fell because I turned on the fan and it's a day later that I found out it fell and one of the spike fell off too so that's what's left of it <laughs> but they are still pretty to me it's green uh, species of a silver uh, I mean uh, swan orchid yeah so yeah um, they're here there's a tiny one there from H&R very cute and see that's my dendrobium lichenastrum and that's a South Australian species this one you know is a uh, dendrobium senile the hairy one it can feel that it's cold so it started to lose um, leaves but it's growing something on the side there you see that I don't know what that is but it's coming out of its stem hopefully it's a flower because I don't think it's leaves so so yeah this one flowered for me uh, the enobi dendrobium so yeah my um, this one already in bud when I got it from uh, or uh, Maui orchid whisperer and this one Philanopsis bl uh, bloom for me it's fragrant and there's more um, Philanopsis there the fragrant is uh, the Gia Ho summer love yeah the pink one but this one is fragrant too from um, uh, Carl Smith uh, yeah. and then yeah so they're they're here this is my um, peloric one so yeah and this is my Kylokista just showing it to you it's got um, leaves on there when you spray it the, the roots turn green so it survived Kylokista lunifera this one right here they're unique this one is my see like they look like braided this is my uh, Lockhartia macarantha it's got yellow flowers they're cute yeah and um, there's more here that one is in bloom my uh, Liparis yeah and um let's see here oh this one i didn't expect to uh, bud because i separate it from the mother uh, bulb because the the this bulb was growing on this the like in the mill and then put out roots so i separated it but i didn't expect much about it but yeah it's starting to flower and uh this is my uh symbidium Signogis, Signogis, Taiwan Gold Orchis, yeah. So, yep, and um, I got a lot here, I haven't even um, showed you, but anyway. And, um, let's see. Another twinkle that starts to uh, bloom. And um, this one right here my uh, rosy sunset f yeah it's starting uh it's been blooming so hopefully they'll pull through mm. and then uh over here more plants so um this one see there's buds in there buds there actually there was like a 
millibugs in here or scale and I have to clean it and you never know till you see underneath the leaves but yeah I sprayed it but I don't like the way I put it because it's near the other plants it might you know transmit to the others but anyway yeah these are my plants here not all of them the rest was left outside and the others are in the shed especially the vandas because they have um hanging wires over there to uh, hang my vandas but i'm using the uh, farmers i cannot even see the name spider farmer uh light who i just look directly to it it's so bright this is a two panel when you buy two panel it's like it's already attached so or if you want you just buy one panel each that way you can uh, uh, put them where you want them but i think they can be separated but they really attached these two panels as one but it's very bright it it looms the it puts out a lot of light here and as you can see i put it on the side of the wall instead of up in the roof and uh, that way the light is shining through all the the um dividers here it just shines through all of them and uh, instead of um on top where it casts some shade on the bottom of the plant so i did that so i did that last year too and they did okay and uh, they were flowering for me so um you know i i think it's enough uh light because uh winter usually uh there's not enough light outside if you can compare with, with other seasons so you don't want to put too much light and then the and then it's cold and the plant thinks it's already spring so that's what is just my reasoning but um yeah if it's not a lot of light and it's cold then they know that it's still winter <laughs> so anyway yeah so these are my plants they're doing here i'm i'll be watering them here i don't want to be um bringing them outside and back again it takes so much time and a lot of walking back and forth inside to uh to bring them in so yeah it takes a lot of work so yeah um these are my new ones that i have rep i haven't repotted i'm just showing you this one here is um an orchid but look at those leaves very different and um this one here is another is an orchid okay so i'm you know excited seeing different uh texture and shapes of the orchid and this one is another orchid see how they have those stems so yeah but hopefully they won't get you know too cold here i have a heater so and here is also another species that's um endemic to philippines um i repotted it so i'll be showing you probably one one day how i repotted it uh this is my acantephyphum let's see mansianianum this has a very unique different uh, uh blooms on it it's like a pendant bulbs and um yeah it's growing after i repot it so and there's another one it's growing new leaves so yeah i'm just showing you different kinds here which is um, exciting when i see different kinds of orchids 
and this is if you remember I did a repot on this one and it's coming along this is my uh, Pinalia floribunda I had a video of it when I first got it but yeah this is how it looks now so yeah I'll be showing you uh, my orchids that's outside and how they fare uh, during the cold so yeah these are my Pelanopsis I left outside well during the cold like in the high 30s 39 degrees Fahrenheit or low 40s I I just left them here I don't know because uh, the roots still attach in there and um, yeah and probably because I don't have space but you can see this one's got spike well it belongs to this one but the leaves are okay so far so yeah they survive and um, this one is Habanaria it will lose leaves anyway during winter and it will grow back uh, during springtime so I'm not worried about that one and uh, my um, Milka Maxillara I mean they survived 37 degrees so but it only dropped to 39 I think so they're okay even this yellow blooms they survive the cold but still I have plants that I covered um, that's my uh, orchid uh, arachnus the one in the wire bare root in the wire so they're like vandas so I cover them uh, because I cannot bring them in because the pot that I um, keep the net the wires steady is heavy they're they're really heavy like river rock so it's torture to lift them so make life easier I just cover them this is my newly acquired uh, oncidium I got it from the Palmer Palmer's nursery uh, fall sale and because it dropped lows but I know they they live outside even in my um, area because uh, one of the nurseries the it grows very big outside with this climate so I left it outside but because of the it's newly it's new and it's just trying still uh, trying to adapt to the new area to its to the mount so I covered the roots just to protect it during the low 30s low 40s but after that I'll take them out because the roots are exposed so I water this one every day like bandas I left my dendrobium aggregatum outside and last week I left them too so they're surviving I don't see any effects of the cold um, on them but my dendrobium uh, that one there and uh, anosmums see they start to yellow but they're uh, deciduous so I'm not worried about it so yeah but the sutic noi my species is in there and I can see um, marks on the leaves that it's it affects it it affects it last year it affects it in, uh, again during cold so it's a species that grows in Asia so I don't know to save the plant I, or it's gonna die after every cold I probably have to mount it probably that way I can put it back here mount it and then uh, just take them in when it's cold I think that's the solution or else every year it's gonna keep dying new growth and then 
you know it's not gonna grow well because every year it's gonna die the new gro the growth anyway and then you put out new growth again and again every year it's just a cycle so might as well just put it in the mount or put it in the pot but I already got one in the pot it's inside so I might mount this one just letting you know it's a species and one of those that don't, will not doesn't like the cold okay uh, these are my cymbidiums uh, I usually don't cover my cymbidiums but because one I uh, actually two pots have spikes the other one is all starting to have buds in it and because I just don't want to carry them in and out during cold I just make life easier and cover it so I'm not sure I haven't opened it yet I'm not sure if if the blood surviving last year the spikes are surviving so I don't know uh, hopefully this coming uh, weeks it's gonna get warmer but I don't like it when before it gets cold it rains for how many hours all night this this what happens and it affects the buds so I, I don't know I haven't even looked at it this right here I covered it last week when it dropped to 39 Fahrenheit uh, this is my Lycastis in there and I'm just showing you that I covered it but this one except this one this is hybrid uh, primary hybrid of the orchid that likes to be in cold temperature it's the let's see Sludgeny Unchained Melody is uh, the Cristada and the so I know they like to be in a cold temperature intermediate mostly so I left them outside and they're okay you see but I don't know about the, my Lycasti on in here I know they don't have leaves anymore some of them but the bud uh, the bulbs uh, because before it got cold it rained all night and so the media are soaking wet and the heat cold heats them and you know the cold water transfers cold even faster so yeah but because they're here outside and the temperature slowly drops it gives them time to acclimate instead of your plants was inside in a warm temperature and then you bring them out in a cold then that's not good for the plant they then adjust slowly okay this one uh, I got this from Palmer's when they have the open house fall open house and yeah this is a species I got this one for forty dollars. Yeah. I don't like the color of it. I think that's why it's cheaper. <laughs> like it's yellowing. It could be that it's also winter. But at least it's got new growth. A lot of new growth there. Yeah. So this is the name. Dendrobium stratiotis. It's a species. So at least it's got a lot of new growth there. And it's a very pretty p flower. I like the lip. And then it's got antlers. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, this one probably I'm gonna put it back there because it was still an isolation from the thrips but um, I think it's okay now it's been okay I just left it here and it start blooming again see this pattern is the chantilly lace cross and it's fragrant so yeah it started blooming again you see the roots are open <laughs> this is typical of the uh, and yeah, Chantilly Stringer and Ganilla Poly Melden Hall. Yeah, 
so man i think i i remember buying this for twenty dollars they have a big specimen there they're very expensive i was lucky to see it when i saw the name chantilly lace i said let me just get it because they it was not in bloom and i got it so that's it it's still in bloom I have to show you this before it starts to fade. See, there's that bug. Those are fruit flies. I think they eat the flower too. So, yeah, they're very fragrant, this Amazon lily. And they love shade, so I might spray that bug there. <laughs> okay. And I just love this lily's pattern. And it's also called Star of Bethlehem. I don't know, it flowered early this year. Usually like it's December or winter when it flowers. So yeah, this is the plant here. Uh, it's a bulb. And it multiplies in number. So yeah, it's very fragrant. It's very pretty when there's a lot. Um, what got me this plant is I saw it in the botanical gardens and there's a lot of them and I searched for it where to find it <laughs> so yeah so this is your Amazon lily so I just want to show you plants that I left what's left outside even my um air plants got left outside and they did okay and my um serographica is in there so i just want you to see that and uh Schoenberkia is in there and i just covered this one they're too big to bring inside but yeah these are the plants left outside and they're surviving i left them outside last week when it got cold so so far because they're enclosed here in the pergola so I think it also helps even though I didn't cover them I just want you to see them um, see there's I have empty um, spaces there yeah they they I left them outside. See, and um, yeah, and then my uh, what is this? My Chrysotropium. I left them out. You see that uh, Schomburgia over there? I'm not sure, but the roots. Eventually, if they adjusted, because it's it's just the day uh, the start of the day that's getting warmer. Um, eventually I can water it maybe tomorrow once they get adjusted to the temperature or late this afternoon if I get time yeah they're here outside and yeah they're not covered I left them out and yeah and this one actually is also in bud see I left them I left them out so I just want you to see that this one is in bud and I left it out. But when it probably is fits a lot lower than yeah, they're in trouble but yeah. So this is my yellow bird, see? I left it out. I left them outside. It's only that um exposed roots that's gonna you know that's hard got cold and you know I don't know they might um, survive and they might not sometimes putting them indoors letting them too dry for a long period of time that's gonna kill it but some uh, a cold spur of one to two days it's they probably will survive I'm just uh, with my own climate here I want to show you this is a covered uh, tropical plant this is my 
blue jade vine so when i first got this one this very rare plant i got it from hawaii maui orchid whisper it was just like a foot tall and i said that i'm gonna bring it indoors when it gets cold because it only lives in a warmer climate like in uh, south florida in their botanical or in botanical garden they have it them growing and they are best growing on the ground they say but mine is in the big pot and then in the hawaii they have this going the uh, hawaii and this is now the second week um i'll be removing the cover but i just want you to see these vines in uh 39 low 40s so far there are there's something eating my leaves here and i have i got frustrated sometimes because there's one plant that i've been nurturing i i saw a lot of new growth and i put it back after winter uh, winter uh, low temperatures and it ate the new growth and yeah that's very frustrating for me so now that plant is gonna stay <laughs> indoors away from here because i cannot figure out what insect is eating the new growth and the bud or something something is eating it and you can see it in the leaves there they have bites even my uh dendrobium nobilis they have a few bites in their leaves so it doesn't bother me but when they it's eating all most of them then that's a problem so yeah so it's still green so i'm not sure i'll be happy to tell you when this winter is over and it's arrived then my area has a chance for this one to to um, go to thrive here yeah so i'll be um i'm gonna be um taking them off the covers and um that way they can um get the natural sunlight and uh natural breeze of air here um this is the shed here and this is where i brought in my hanging plants when it gets too cold and uh, yeah you see there's a clear panels there so that it can bring out some sun but we ha i have a heater here and sometimes sometimes it takes two heaters to keep it warm here so i have two small portable heaters to keep the the area warmer for the vendas so and then when the cold gets better like in the 50s i bring them out so they can be watered daily okay this is one oh uh, that's where my arachnis is that i covered and this was already how they look like uncovered this is my covered uh, cymbidium area and this is why i covered it usually i don't cover them but one of them already got buds forming in them yeah and then my uh, emeralds green that one that did very well last year also has new growth let's see if i can show you let's see there's that new growth behind the tag there's that growth there and then at the back see if i can show you there's that one in the middle yeah and there's also on the back here so that's i think it are um i don't think they're growth spike it is the possibility of uh, uh bloom spike because it's uh kind of winter or 
and that's where they usually put on uh, their spike so that's why I covered that but I really don't like it when uh, it rained before the cold and then the cold hits them and it just affects the development of the bud but that one don't have a bud yet but hopefully it's okay and then the other one it's already forming so hopefully it will do okay when I covered it these are the ones under the tree that I covered and these are my Lycastis see these are bulbs left so they're doing okay for now anyway this one was in the shed and I put bring them out when he goes to forties I have to bring them in because it shows in the leaves that they're sensitive to the cold it's my uh, black pagoda lipstick so this is the one with nice green leaves with dark patterns on the back and they're flowering they're in flower yeah so I just want you to see that very pretty I like the way the habit goes so that's that one over here um, this is also I covered because they're too big they're in big pots to carry so I just left them here and covered them up that's it so I'm gonna show you my last uh, this is non orchid is the one I covered my uh, blue jade vine so this is how they look uncovered and yeah and hopefully they will survive they they grow in Philippines and there's also they're also very rare um, you don't always see them over there um, they live mostly in the forest I think but yeah um, see those are the vines from it and so far it didn't brown up yet because uh, last week it also dropped to 39 so yeah and there's more over there and hopefully Hopefully it will withstand the cold. Then I know it's a break, breaking record that it can withstand my uh, 39 degrees or 40s uh, degrees Fahrenheit uh, temperature as long as you cover them up and they're in here in pergola or in greenhouse. So thank you so much for watching and yep hope to see you on my next video thank you guys bye now